The Kirby franchise is renowned for its unique design philosophy, combining adorable, soft visuals with simple yet immersive gameplay. Amidst these so-called Kirby-isms, the term Sakurai uses to describe these elements, there's one character that stands out. Meta Knight makes his first appearance in Kirby's Adventure for the NES, where he's been appointed by King Dedede to guard one of the seven Star Rod fragments in an effort to keep Nightmare sealed in the Fountain of Dreams. Not much is known about Meta Knight, but it's made very clear from the first encounter that he's not your average baddie. Before engaging in combat with the player, he offers them a sword of their own. Donning a mask and cape, the chivalrous warrior is averse to having his identity revealed, being notably quick to vanish when the player manages to defeat him. He later goes on to act as a mentor and role model for Kirby, and his disciplined, skillful character is clearly reflected in his appearances throughout the Smash series. How's it going, Smashers? My name is Bonk, and in this video, we'll be taking you through the competitive history of Meta Knight in Super Smash Bros. Whether you're looking to master Meta Knight, or any other character for that matter, ProGuides.com is the number one spot for courses taught by pros, 24-7 live coaching, and loads of other content. Don't forget to check us out over on the website. After the video, of course. Before we get into today's competitive history, a brief disclaimer. At certain points throughout the video, we may make reference to players that are currently banned from competitive play. While we understand that these figures may be controversial, we wish to provide an accurate representation of history, above all else. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Meta Knight made his first playable appearance with the release of Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and it was evident from the very beginning that he was easily a candidate for best character in the game. To attempt to describe Meta Knight in terms of any single cohesive playstyle or game plan would be doing a disservice to the character, as he quite literally had it all. From his sword large enough to put Marf's falchion to shame, to some of the highest grounded mobility in the game, as well as the insane frame data on his normals that made him play like a turbo mode character when compared to the typical slow, deliberate movements of Brawl, Meta Knight was genuinely in a class of his own. Whether you wanted to play him like a sortie, making use of his quick mobility to carefully space his large grounded normals, or even camp in the air with his generously proportioned down air to stuff air-to-air -air attempts, ramming into opponents that would attempt to challenge you with Mock Tornado, Meta Knight could do it all. He was one of few characters in Brawl to possess a combo tree that wasn't reliant on chain grabs, and his edgeguarding was legitimately godlike as well. The latter was in part due to his exceptional recovery, which was at least partially augmented by the fact that he could literally fly. Meta Knight wasn't the only character with the ability to glide, but the other characters that did weren't good enough for it to make a difference. With his up special, Shuttle Loop, also leading directly into a glide, he was the only character capable of gliding twice before landing. Fortunately, this created a character that was actually very skill-expressive, and some would argue that Meta Knight being the only playable character would make for a more interesting game than if Meta Knight were the only banned character. Despite this, as the Smash community does, they began discussing a ban of the character from competitive play. The first two Brawl Super Majors, Wobo and Genesis, would feature seven and three Meta Knights in their respective top eights, and it became apparent to Brawl players that the character was overwhelmingly strong. Because of this, various polls were held by organizations such as the Smash Backroom and the Unity Rule Set Committee to see what the community thought. In 2011, the latter organization actually opted to ban Meta Knight as part of an experimental rule set, and to nobody's surprise, top players that mained the character simply chose not to attend events that followed in their footsteps. With many TOs overruling their decision to attract the attendance of top players, and after general backlash from the community, the ban was repealed, and it was clear that Meta Knight was here to stay. His early representation was largely provided by players like Mewtwo King, Tyrant, and Dojo. 
While these players wouldn't necessarily fall off, and Mewtwo King in particular would remain relevant throughout the game's life, Meta Knight's prominence would gradually give rise to some of the best players the game would ever see, including names like Nairo, Zero, and Otori, just to name a handful. Meta Knight's representation would never see a decline, and he would continue to dominate top 8s until the game finally died with the release of Smash 4. During the transition from Brawl to Smash 4, Meta Knight would undergo a series of drastic changes. The range of his attacks would be significantly reduced, his frame data would be toned down to reasonable levels, and they would completely remove gliding from the game, converting the loop of Shuttle Loop into a second hit, into which the first hit would combo, most of the time. With the release of Smash for 3DS, it would appear that Meta Knight had been gutted, and by gutted, we mean he had all of the makings of a Smash 4 top tier, but his hitboxes were just not exactly where they needed to be, to put it lightly. Fortunately, or unfortunately for all the floaty mains out there, this was very quickly adjusted with patch 1.0.4 dropping just two months after the release of Smash for 3DS and just in time to act as the base version of Smash for Wii U. They made a couple of changes doing things to remove the forward air drag down and increasing the damage dealt by neutral air, but the single most substantial change was an adjustment of up air's hitbox placement, increasing the move's vertical range. With this, the remaining elements of Meta Knight's design would come to fruition in the form of a 50-50 timing minigame with odds completely in Meta Knight's favor. The name of the game was Dash Attack. Meta Knight was gonna stand there, and you had to guess when the unreactable Frame 7 Dash Attack was coming so you could press a button or spot dodge. Start shielding? Get dash grabbed, nerd! Once he had you, your stock was as good as gone thanks to his iconic up-air ladder combo. They could just die. They could just die when I hit them. So like, if that if that happens, I'm like, wow, I'm beating this hell of good people. And you know, sometimes I don't hit it and I <coughs> lose and it's really sad. Meta Knight didn't really have much in the way of shortcomings either. Many people would argue that his linearity was a problem, but this comes from an ingrained perspective that linearity is inherently bad, as most characters were reliant on ambiguity to create openings. In Meta Knight's case, it wasn't a problem at all, and he regularly opened people up at the top level with no trouble at all. Naturally, he took off in the early meta and saw prolific representation at the top level in many regions, with players like Ido from NorCal, Tyrant from SoCal, MKLeo from Mexico, and even Abadongo from Japan all making the first edition of the PGR, in addition to being some of the strongest talent in their respective regions. It's hard to pin Meta Knight's rise to the top to a single breakout event, because he had been seeing phenomenal results from the very beginning, with a lot of early majors including EVO 2015, Genesis 3, EVO 2016, and countless others all featuring at least two Meta Knights in Top 32. He was an extremely common pocket character as well, most notably for his strong matchups against floaty characters like Rosalina and Peach. It is worth mentioning that, near the end of the first season, Meta Knight would receive multiple nerfs targeting his up air, in an attempt to attenuate the strength of his ladder combo. With a 1% damage reduction, an increase of the SDI multiplier from 1 to 1.5, and a reduction of the knockback angle, surely Meta Knight would be gone for good. Right? Wrong! The ladder combo still worked perfectly fine, barring a small handful of two or three characters with exceptionally high gravities. Meta Knight would hardly move down the tier list at all, and his shift from top 10 to top 15 would largely be caused by the addition of the five DLC characters that happened to be better than him. Meta Knight himself was just as good as he had always been in the aforementioned DLC characters, the likes of Bayonetta, Cloud, Mewtwo, Ryu, and Corrin, were almost certainly even matchups for Meta Knight. 
Nonetheless, these nerfs would push a number of his top representatives to abandon the character, and with Leo moving on to Marth, Abadongo being a filthy Bayo main, Tyrant being generally washed, and not to mention Ido's retirement from competitive play, Meta Knight's representation would gradually shift hands as the meta progressed, before eventually settling on AC, Rags, and DSS. With two PGR representatives and a shockingly bad design that persisted through an impressive four years of competitive play with no major balance adjustments, Meta Knight would be able to close this chapter of his Smash career and mark it as an overwhelming, albeit not quite brawl-like, success. Aside from that one set rags and elegant played at Smash and Splash, I almost forgot. True story, I lost $40 because I side bet for rags that day, but... You know, cut me some slack. That same day, I also beat Ally, so I guess I was just feeling cocky. I don't know. Rag still got top 8 that weekend. Let, let's, let's move on, okay? Let's move on. With Smash Ultimate on the horizon, expectations were high for Meta Knight's third playable appearance in the series. While the games played at official demo setups were not particularly interesting, two weeks prior to the game's official release, a handful of Meta Knight players would manage to get their hands on the full game after it had been leaked due to an accidental release in Mexico. They immediately took to posting on Twitter, with players such as Glacy and Nofall uploading clips of various zero-to-death combos they had been able to land in training mode and during friendlies. In typical Smash Twitter fashion, multiple users, including top players such as Captain Zack, would immediately begin discussing a potential ban of the character from competitive play. When the game finally released, everyone was completely let down. All of the wacky ladders off the side into Mock Tornado were situational at best, down throw into up tilt has virtually no true follow-ups, and they had significantly nerfed his down throw, dash attack, and Shuttle Loop, which made his old ladder combos into Shuttle Loop far less reliable. That's not to say that the character had absolutely nothing going for him, but the community would not and still has not realized that, with many notable community figures placing Meta Knight in low tier, claiming that he's held back by a linear neutral and inconsistent combos. Surprisingly, it doesn't take much digging to find out that Meta Knight's neutral is actually the highlight of the character. With his neutral air being nearly identical in frame data to that of Fox, only while covering his entire body in hitboxes and dealing more damage in knockback, and his down air protecting him from air-to-air -air attempts as he double jumps to enforce his landing mix, his neutral resembles a somewhat watered-down version of how the character might have been played in Brawl, and is exceptionally effective when put into the context of Smash Ultimate's quick jump acceleration and high input delay. His edge guarding is still easily the best in the game as well, and that's only to be expected when you have 6 jumps and a literal sword. Some weaknesses of the character include his poor air-to-air -air options as well as his low damage per hit. These aren't necessarily problems on their own, but they come together to create a character that, being the 12th lightest in the game, can't really afford to trade, but regularly has to risk trading to anti-air. Early on, a number of his Smash 4 representatives would try the character out, at least briefly, and those that saw the most success included players like Abadongo, Jay, and Slither2 Hunter. Abadongo would gradually drop the character in favor of various top tiers, Jay would begin to put more time into his Pokemon trainer and Joker, and Slither2 Hunter has since been banned from competitive play. Meta Knight's representation since then has been dry, to say the least, but the character isn't completely dead. Nowadays, his best results are held by the likes of myself and Ye, with Armando being the favorite pick for a close third by ability alone. Smash Ultimate has yet to see any official backroom-produced tier list, so for the time being, any tier placement is going to be completely speculative. For now, we're content with saying that Meta Knight is a comfortable mid-tier, and anything higher than that is gonna take some stronger representation or even just one convincing breakout event. Of course, we're still relatively early on into Smash Ultimate's life, and there's plenty of time for the meta to develop, for balance patches to be released, and for new talent to appear from practically anywhere, so anything is still possible. Nonetheless, this is what we know right now, and as for the future, 
Only time will tell. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, Smashers! Now that we've taken you through every iteration of Meta Knight and Smash, which one do you think is the coolest? Do you think Ultimate Meta Knight can secure a place in the high tier once again, or are his days as a knight of the metagame numbered? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you can be notified when we upload new videos. That's all, and we'll see you guys in the next video.